Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. I've noticed that quite a few of you have asked for a video on oneless magic. Now, we know that in the wizarding world, it is commonplace for young witches and wizards to visit Ollivanders and receive their first wand. With their wand, they can begin to practice magic and hone their magical abilities. Wands help them to channel their magic and achieve a more accurate or potent result. Generally, in order to cast a spell, it is required of the caster to utter the correct words and wave the wand accordingly. How the words are said and how the wand is moved can depend on the spell. If you want to hear my theory on how these patterns are determined and how spells are created, check out the link in the description after you've finished here. Anyway, moving along, if magic is conjured via the wand, then what reasonable explanation could there be for wandless magic? We see wandless magic from the likes of Dumbledore, Voldemort, Moody, Flitwick, and many more. How and why do they do it? What's interesting about wandless magic is that it really only stands out to us because of its ubiquity among the wizarding world that we have become familiarized with. Through the books and films, we are indoctrinated from the start to think that a wand is essential to magical achievement, when in reality, wandless magic is actually a norm for other species and cultures. Prime examples of magical beings that perform magic without wands include goblins and elves, who are even known to refer to humans as wand bearers. Expanding on this, in the world of Harry Potter, the wand is said to be a European invention, which means that cultures outside of Europe would have always practiced magic without one. It is said that Native American wizards have their own methods of producing magic predating colonization, and that African wizards only adopted the wand in the 20th century. So really, wandless magic is a lot more common than you may think. Outside of these cultures and species, I feel that the use of wandless magic in a world where the use of a wand is ubiquitous can be attributed to one of two things. A. Powerful magical ability, vast experience, and calculated casting. Or B. Lack of experience and accidental casting. Underage witches and wizards who have yet to receive their first wand have been known to cast this type of magic. Most often, the reason for this is that the children had a lack of control over their abilities, thus unintentionally casting a spell. Experienced witches and wizards, however, most likely cast wandless magic out of convenience. Wizards like Dumbledore or Voldemort are so powerful and versed in magic that they really see no use for a wand in most everyday circumstances. Their magic has been fine-tuned to the point that it would not make sense for them to pull out a wand every five minutes. However, it is said that if wandless magic is performed incorrectly, it can produce unfavorable results, which would deter a lot of the general population who are not accustomed to it. However, for powerful wizards, this wouldn't even be a consideration because they are so confident in their magical capabilities. One question that should be answered here is if one form of producing magic is more powerful than the other. Wand versus no wand. The answer to this question is of course that magic produced with a wand is more powerful. I can say this with confidence because if producing wandless magic was as or more powerful than magic with a wand, then powerful wizards would be doing it under all circumstances. In reality, in more important situations where more power is required, we see Voldemort and Dumbledore using wands. A prime example of this is their duel in the Ministry Atrium where they would have really needed to hone in on their magical capabilities. Expanding on that, it is said to be a pain point in the relationship between elves, goblins, and humans, that humans will not disclose the secrets of producing magic with a wand. This suggests to me that the use of a wand must be better somehow. Additionally, if African countries practiced magic without a wand for so long, and only later adopted it, then there must be some appeal or rationale behind one usage. With all of that said, I think that we can include a few things. The first being that oneless magic is more convenient. The second, that oneless magic is riskier and more complicated. And the third being that oneless magic, produced by the same wizard, is not as powerful as magic that comes from a wand. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like. As always, if you have any questions or video ideas, then comment them down below. Until next time. You're a wizard, Harry.